Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather, another large and deadly earthquake, space news, and a run of our terrestrial weather. But first, let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star continue the quiet trend for the most part. No sunspots, no solar flares, and no major ejections, perhaps just a tiny one. A ripple you might be able to see crossing the southern polar region was basically caused by a general lift in the corona, and then a stealth-like pinch and ejection that we're really only lucky enough to see on SOHO. The expanse of the ejection may actually deliver a small glancing blow to Earth's magnetic field on Tuesday or Wednesday, but it is of no concern. For those with the Disaster Prediction app, you got your solar wind alert a couple hours ago. Triple the normal density, if not closer to a 5x increase, and we'll be expecting the faster solar wind stream today or tonight, along with geomagnetic storm potential. You can also see right behind the coronal hole center disk is another one incoming just south of the equator from the eastern limb. Another one. And with the IMF, the earthquakes remained in full force yesterday with a significant and shallow 5.8 striking the Iran-Turkmenistan border region. It killed at least two, injured more than 400, destroyed over 600 homes, and almost completely demolished a few villages. Most slept in the streets last night. The event indeed struck the northern Middle East alert set for the area just east of the Caspian Sea, one of the larger alerts we put on that map actually. However, to count for our stats, it must be higher than magnitude 6, and it came in at 5.8, so it will not count as a hit for our model system. Let's jump now to the Trappist planet system with seven Earth-sized planets, and it turns out that all of them being closer to their star than Mercury is to ours is a rough go for simulating their orbits. They all crash and collide within just a few years. So, have we caught the Trappist system just before destruction, or is there something stabilizing it over time? Well, a new study has measured the orbital resonance around the system and found it to be the longest resonant pattern of any known exoplanet system. Two orbits of the furthest out planet equals three of the next and up and so forth in perfect resonance pattern. We have seen similar patterns to this in other exoplanet systems, but nowhere near to the degree that we see it in the Trappist system. Seven Earth-sized worlds singing the music of the spheres. Folks, registration for Observing the Frontier 2018 begins tonight at the New Day UTC, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. You can secure your spot to see many of our returning favorites and some new surprises we will reveal slowly over the coming weeks. Today, a special presentation on space weather and human health will take place. More to come, but for now, limited space in VIP, limited space in the venue hotel. Find the details, find the time, find otf.cells.com, and I'll look forward to shaking your hand next year. Quick weather notes, remember the atmospheric potential heading east of India? Well, reports are in. More dead from lightning strikes and flash floods. In the United States today, a nor'easter-type storm is spinning off the east coast. Eyes open for what it plans to bring this evening. And lastly, folks, in the UK, eyes to the south as in a few hours a bulge of moisture should break through and make its way up to you. Can't stress enough, email interests suggest OTF 2018 will be another sold-out event. And for the hotel space and VIP registration, those are very limited. We've got the rest of the world's weather and shots of our star to close. It's 6.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.